المسلمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد قائد الغر المحجلين وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه إلى يوم الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين وعلمنا التأويل وألهمنا رشدنا يا رب العالمين الحمد لله In our lessons on Imam Ibrahim al-Bajuri's Tuhfat al-Murid We gave an introduction in the last class to the author and to the text by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and today in our study of this upper intermediate level work in Islamic beliefs we are going to be looking ta'ala, at the author's opening supplication and his opening to the text bi'idhnihi subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will just recap briefly um, what some of the key aims we looked at last class and one of the practical adab of just any class and it should just become something a student does themselves as well is that you even quickly review what are the main things that happened in the last class because even if you give that five minutes of your time if you don't have five minutes two minutes just look up uh, quickly then you'll see how the, the, what you, you are st- studying now connects with what you took previously and we shared some of the issues related to that so we're just going to do a quick review of what we took previously to begin with just a, a quick review of the introduction so we touched upon this reality that you know the science of islamic beliefs right in which this is a level four text has a particular definition that they classically give um right um that it's ilmun yuqtadaru bihi ala ithbat al aqaid al diniya min adillatiha tafsiliya ma ma'rifati yani al dini al hujjaj etc and we looked at these various aspects of the definition. We also emphasized that there is a merit in graduated study of beliefs. And we look, look through what one should, like what, you know, what our you know, curriculum here is at Seekers related to the um, level one, level two, level three of beliefs, right? And that gives one, you know, that first one takes the essentials and one strengthens one's foundations, then one builds on those foundations um, by, you know, by deepening and widening one's understanding and so on. Right? At the same time, while it's good to, to have graduated study, one does need to move forward as well. Right? There are broadly two errors that students of knowledge make. One is that they jump, right? You, you know, if you know Arabic, you can read Hashit al-Bajuri directly. But what will you get from it? About the amount you'd have gotten for by covering a level one text. However, you would have had less headache, right? By just covering a text more suitable at your level. That's one mistake. The other one is that some people become, you know, they, um, they get what you can call the MBA, right? They, get, they become a master of basic um, academics, right? In the sense that you you study the Kharida, you study the Tahawiyyah, then someone else is doing a course on the basics of Islamic beliefs. Then you do this, be- which is good at one level, but if you all you do is just go around the basics, and especially if you just, the point of studying one level is to know it well, and then move forward. Right, because that moving forward is also important. Right, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Now, the author whom we're studying, and we talked about him, you know, Imam Ibrahim al Bajuri, who also features in level three when we did Hashit al Bajuri on the Sanusiya, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Adib Kallas, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, has this beautiful quote that Al Bajuri muhaqqiqu aqiyati ahli sunnah, right, that Imam. Ba- Imam Bajuri is a verifier, or literally the verifier of the beliefs of Ahl al-Sunnah. Um, and he's one of the notable 
scholars. Of course, there's no such thing in Islamic scholarship as the absolute final word on anything related to the details. Right? Nobody disagrees. La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. There's heaven, there's hell. The, the clear beliefs are clear. But in the nuances and the details and definitions, there, that, that is the subject matter of, of scholarship. But at the same time, one shouldn't get lost in the details from remembering the bigger picture as well. Because that is also an important aspect, right? That some people, they'll know, oh, mashallah, we, you know, there's some brothers who they studied with, a, with an Indonesian scholar in some level of depth. When studying the Sanusiya, they did six, seven lessons over three months because the Sheikh couldn't give a weekly class on the Basmala. <coughs> okay. Um, and then the class died out, number one. Number two, so what does the Basmala mean? What are the investigations on the Basmala that relate to Islamic beliefs? Oh, I'm not sure. And that's not really uh, the point either. So one doesn't get lost in details. Now here, in this text, at level four, right, we've highlighted that there's five key aims that we need to pay attention to, right? You know, the first is that we're trying to deepen our understanding. And practically one of the things that relates to deepening our understanding is that as we study this, part of deepening our understanding is consolidate relevant things you've done before, right? That is part of, you know, traveling in a caravan. You have your own caravan of knowledge. Take it along with you. And you'll find many points of benefit, right? Um, and you'll find many interconnections with other things. You may have studied a text in Hadith, and if you pause and think, so, oh, there are some really good lessons about, oh, in the Hadith Jibreel class, there's some really nice discussions on the meaning of the Shahada. Okay. You can make a cross-reference to that, right? Now, you don't have to necessarily go back and read the whole thing. But you could put, put a cross-reference. Later, when you're reviewing, you may be able to fill that in. But that's part of deepening your understanding is to make those connections. Also, to look into the relevant nuances of the subject. Right, the relevant nuances on the subject. And there's one of the questions that the student of knowledge should ask is, so what? Right, and part of respecting someone is to think that if they're mentioning something, it's because maybe there's some importance. Right? So, for example, why do they expand on the Basmala? Because guess what? We say it all the time. Right? Are these meanings of practical relevance in our lives? Yes, they should be. Right? So that's we delve into the nuances insofar as they help us in our own cultivation of faith, which is what Aqidah is about, but also in if give, giving us clarity. There are critical investigations in Aqidah and we'll be striving, inshallah, for each lesson at giving clarity regarding some of these and pointing to relevant resources. We shared, we won't repeat them, some of the relevant resources that you can consult on. When we come closer to some of the contemporary issues, we'll mention some of the contemporary resources and scholars and so on that you would find some benefit in. And a practical outcome should be that you should have the ability to explain, teach, transmit, and affirm these beliefs according to the usage understandings and method of the scholars, right? So that you've got that toolkit that in different contexts, you're able to clarify um, Islamic beliefs. And then, you know, the final point that we highlighted was this, you know, the reminder of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tablugu, the remain, it's, it, it's not possible to translate al-qasd, but it's remain purposeful, right? Remain purposeful and you shall reach. Literally, you shall reach and reaching is success, right? right? So, yeah, they say, تض, يعني, بالمقصود, right? You'll attain what you seek, i.e. you will succeed, right? 
So that's just a brief recap of the last lesson. We talked briefly about Imam Laqani and what distinguished him, Imam Al-Bajuri, what distinguished him. The Talib Al-Ilm here would know what, what, what's, a, what's the big deal about Imam Al-Bajuri? What's the big deal about um, the Jawhara? What's the big deal about Imam Al-Bajuri? If someone asked you, or you're studying Bajuri's uh, Tahfid Al-Murid, um, can you tell me a little bit about Imam Ibrahim Al-Laqani? Should be able to give a few brief biographical details. Likewise, Imam Al-Bajuri, who is he? What's his significance? Some biographical details. That's just part of the you know scholarly method. And that's just something you need to hold yourself to, which is why we have pointed you. Right? We have pointed you that just in the introduction to the ad- edition of the text, there are some sound biographical details that capture those points from. Right, And we're dealing with you in this class on the premise that you are, inshallah, committed students of knowledge. So you'll do at least some of those expectations yourself, bi ta'ala. We're going to be breaking... Lesson one down into two parts, bi'idhin lahi ta'ala. Right? So we're going to uh, look at the author's opening, right? his opening supplication and the opening to the text, and then start looking at the basmala. We'll complete looking at the basmala in the second half of the lesson, which we'll take next week, bi'idhin lahi ta'ala, just to get people into the flow of, in the, of the class. And we will, bi'ithni ta'ala, be sharing a number of resources, particularly related to the basmala and a few of the other uh, points. But those are recommended readings, right? They're recommended readings. They're not requirements. But if you do them, you'll find uh, significant benefit, bi'ithni ta'ala. And some of those are things that you put on your to-do list. These are resources that I want to access and at some point benefit from. So there is the a stylized opening by the by Imam Al Bajuri. Imam Al Bajuri generally has more economy in his openings than many of the later scholars. And he tends to put an economical amount of flourishes. You find Many authors who have long, very elaborate flourishes, but Imam al Bajuri is reasonably moderate in his his opening. Um, so, Nasrullah subhanahu wa taala, at Taysir wa Tawfiq, we will start um, looking at the text, bi'idhni Allah taala, and this is a time, of course, for us to just take a moment to gather our own intentions set the the highest possible of aims as we begin so musta'inun billahi ta'ala naqul yani and we of course uh, n- uh, relate this text through by study of it through sheikh Ad- adib al kallas who studied this text um, with both sheikh abu yusra abidin and sheikh salih uh, Farfur with their chains back to Imam al Bajuri and likewise with their chains back to Imam Ibrahim al Laqani. We also narrate this text from Sheikh Akram Abdul Wahab of Mosul and a number of others as well. So, Faqala Sheikh al Islam, al Imam Ibrahim al Bajuri, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Bismillah al Rahman al Rahim. So, his opening supplication, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah al-munfarid bil-i'dam wal-ijad. Al-munazzah an shawaib al-naqs wal-adad. Wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah. Al-qadim al-mukhalif lima'adahu min al-kainat. Al-baqi wa halikun kullu man adahu min al-makhlukat. وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله الصادق الأمين المبلغ كلما أمر به عفوا كلما أمر بتبليغه من رب العالمين 
صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه جواهر المعارف وأزهار رياض أزهار رياض الفصاحة والعوارف So there's a number of points here, right? There are a number of sunnas of openings that we've mentioned in previous courses as well that generally you see in the prophetic usage, etc. He'll explain when he talks about the basmala, you know, beginning with the basmala, the hamdala, but the optimal opening um, mentioned by, as mentioned by um, Imam al-Nawawi, for example, would also include the shahada. You see this frequently. Many ulama often, Imam Nawawi does it in his works as well. They say you begin with the basmala, the hamdala, the shahada, right? Uh, basmala, the hamdala, salah on the Prophet, and the shahada. And then you explain two critical things. What are you talking? Who are you? A few things. Who are you? What are you writing about? Why is it significant? You also may be giving some context of why you're writing this. Right? So there are a number of mustahsanat al fi ta'lif. Some of the things that are praiseworthy in writing. And you find many places where this is discussed. Imam Zabidi talks about it in the opening of the Ihya of Imam al-Ghazali and many others do as well. It's one of the investigations that the commentators on Tahdib al-Mantiq often mention about because Tahdib al-Mantiq of Imam Taftazani they mention about because there's the issue of order. So what what should you begin with? Right? And it's a sign of clear thinking. So that's now with this, of course, there's another element that comes up here, which is the issue of Bara'atul Istihlal. At beginning with that which indicates the purpose. And that's evident here. Um, and there's a few matters of usage as well that you will notice in the text that he says, he puts al-i'dam before ijad. Right? Although you'd, cons- you'd think that you'd mention al-ijadi wal-i'dam. But Allah alone takes out of existence and he originates. And there's several reasons for that. Why would he mention Al-Munfaridi bil I'dam wal Ijad? Why would he mention I'dam first? Onliners? Why would he mention I'dam before Ijad? Could we say that Adam is awesome and Ijad is... Go ahead. Hmm? One is, yeah, it just... Saja, uh, it fits very practically. Trust someone interested in Arabic to do that. It just fits the... You know, the, the, the rhyme, right? Yeah, the default is Adam. No, the default is Adam. The default is Adam. Right? Now Allah, d- does he have to do i'dam of things for them to be in Adam? No. So why would you put it? Right? This comes up in the Quran in Surah Al-Mulk. الذي خلق الموت Right? Because there is a form. Like why would Allah say الذي خلق الموت right? One of them is Right, that al i'dam adallu ala kamali qudrati Allahi Taala min al ijad. Why? That taking things out of existence is more expressive of the absoluteness of Allah's power than bringing them to existence. Why? Because there is a, at least a zahir similarity. Zahir. That, you know, in creation, there's a rabt between sabab and musabab. Parents give birth to a child. 
you know, you plant a seed, tree comes out. So there's at least in min hayth, rabta sabab al musabab, there is an apparent similarity between, you know, normative causality and the absolute causality of the divine act of ijad. But no one shares i'dam with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the absolute sense. That's, that's one. And the other, the simplest argument also is that you see, of course, the, you need the many lessons, like almost if someone wanted to take it, you could just take this and bring out the meanings of, of Tawheed just from the introduction. right? Because he talks about the transcendence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the absoluteness of, of his power. You know, mention the shahadatain, but also affirms, reaffirms his transcendence. You know, the attributes of negation come up. So in this, he is, he's mentioned Allah, he's mentioned the attributes of negation, his being qadim, baqi, mukhalif lil hawadith, al ghani. He's mentioned the reality of everything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and so on. Mention the aqaid of um, uh, prophethood as well, right? Because he mentions the qualities of, um, you know, the Prophet ﷺ being sadiq, amin, giving tabliq, etc. And also, of course, an important ca characteristic of Ahl Sunnah, which is that we firm, affirm the great honor of the prophetic household and the Sahaba. Right, so there are, you know, this is you know, an example of Barat al Istihlal, right? And there's many indications there. And it's good to just break those things down for oneself, right? That this is how, how he did it. Now, how you do that well in different contexts, right? That if you're giving a, a lesson in English, this might not be Barat al Istihlal in English, right? Right? Because how you introduce the topic in a manner suitable to the audience depends on the audience too. And even in modern Arabic, you say this, like you say to modern Arabs that the, 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 the al and the sah, uh, sahab are jawahirul ma'arif. Do you think most modern Arabs get, what, what are you talking about? No. And it'll be lost on them. So you have to be aware. We are not in Imam Bajuri's time, even if we're speaking in Arabic. Right? Azhari riyadat al fasahati wal awarif. Right? That's a beautiful expression. You can break it down. But you can't speak like that in modern Arabic in most contexts, right? You lose the people you're talking to. Right? And so this is, alhamdulillah, his, op his opening supplication. And then he begins. أما بعد فيقول أفقر الورى إلى ربه القدير شيخ الإسلام الإمام إبراهيم إبراهيم بن محمد البيجوري ذو التقصير right so here of course there's one of the keys of attainment for the believer which is تواضع right is تواضع and they say, right, at tawadu tahqiq al ubudiya wa miftah at tawfiq. Right? Tawadu is true tawadu, is a realization of slavehood, right? And a key to divine success, right? The Prophet said, Man tawadu alillah rafa'ahu Allah. Right? Right? And much else has been said about humility. You can find uh, amazing aphorisms of Ibn Ata'illah on what's the reality of humility. Um, right? So, but he also affirms his neediness to Allah. So, أفقر الورى Right? تحقق بفقرك يمدك بغناه yeah, be, be realized in your neediness and Allah will assist you with his absolute independent richness. Right? And he mentions his full name and affirms his shortcomings because that is part of slavehood, that you realize that the, 
that the debt of gratitude you owe Allah is great. So whatever you do, you would recognize that you fall short. Okay, so then he says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, right? And he, he tells us about what he's writing about and why. So he says, And we won't touch upon it, but there is there's entire treatises written on Amma Ba'd. Amongst them by Maulana Ruhani Al-Bazi. And we'll share some of these in the resources, bi um, Not suggesting that you necessarily read it in full, but, you know, it's at least good to be aware that things are not just superficial, right? That there's a lot of meanings behind it, whether at the level of, you know, the grammar of it, the sarf of it, the balagha of it, the background in the usage of the Arabs, many, many different aspects, and some things can be overkill. Like these, the Mawlana Ruhani al-Bazi has a number of treatises that could be considered overkill. But it's said that, he, and he was a recent scholar, just died a couple of decades ago, right? Um, from Lahore, I believe. But it's to show people that things aren't that simplistic and superficial, right? And if nothing else, they should teach us to be people of reflection. Don't just take things at superficial value. Now you don't have to go get lost in the details, but they're there. Right? So that's Amma Ba'd. We're not going to go into it. If you want, if you dig, you can find. We'll be sharing just one of the suggested resources. So he says, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Innahu lamma kana nazmu al-alim al-allama al-habr al-bahr al-fahama Okay. Okay. وقد أولع الناس بالدخول في رياض فوائده والأخذ من ثمار موائده سألني وفد من الإخوان أصلح الله تعالى لي ولهم الحال والشأن أن أكتب عليه حاشية تسفر عن مطويات ما فيه من الرموز والأسرار وتكشف عنه سدول النقاب والأستار. So then he continues. Right. فلما شرح صدري. There's a, a few things here, right? That he tells us a few of the things that distinguish جوهرات التوحيد. Right. A few of the things that uh, distinguish جوهرات التوحيد. And I just did a quick numbering of it, right? In my personal copy, right? That what did it do? Right? Nazama fara'idah had al fan. Right? And what's nazama? Of course, he's pointing to two things with nazama, right? It's, a, it, it's in nazam, obviously, but also nazam is properly arranging something, right? Um, the fara'id of this fan, right? So it's not just a nazam in aqidah, right? It's a well arranged work that has. The, the unique details of this, pointing to the reality that it has um, great nuances. Of course, the al is lilahad, right? This mahud zihnan is fan, which is aqida. Fi iqdin nadid, of course, you know, you would look up terms like this, right? Al iqdun nadid, a murattabun ghayat al tartib. Right? Right? You see, um, and you can look look that up in terms of you know, the, the Lughawi meaning, right? So that's number one. Right? It's, it's arrangement and it's subtlety. Secondly, it, it has nafais al durar wa mahasin al ghurar. Right? It has unique pearls 
of knowledge, which is, we talked about it, those details, right, of rare and distinguishing points that often you don't find elsewhere, right? Like, right? That we m- mentioned a couple about the ru'ya to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, lakin bila kayfin wal hisari. Or for example, there's a lot of discussion that about, okay, the ru'ya to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, هذا وللمختار دنيا ثبتت. Right? Because the discussion that, okay, it is rationally possible for Allah to be beheld, full stop. And we'll see why. But it's only affirmed for the mukhtar in this life. But even the usage of the word mukhtar there is why? Because it's not affirmed for anybody else. But he also points to the fact that it that the chosen opinion that it's thabatat lahu. And as we will see, because it's a matter within Ahl Sunnah that there's difference of opinion about. Now, if you are an irritable Sunni, then you may find this class a little irritating. And we're not here to irritate you. Um, which is that there are issues where there's ikhtilaf. We're going to be pointing them out to you, right? Um, I like the khalaf and the salaf. So the, you know, the, mo- most of the conclusions of the later scholars are built on centuries of scholarship. And they tend to, you know, you know, there's a reason why the later scholars did accept those conclusions. But there's certain things that there is discussion on. And it's important for us to have the maturity to appreciate that there are things that there's nuance about. Um, so these are these durar that, and if you spend time reflecting on, you say, "Oh wow!" By referring to the Prophet I send there as Mukhtar, is he also alluding to the fact that it is chosen that he did see Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Because there's ikhtilaf, there's a well-established opinion, right, that he didn't see him. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Actually, Imam Abu Bakr al kallabadi I apologize to the irritable Sunnis. Abu Bakr al-Kallabadi in At-Ta'arruf ila Mathab Ahl al-Tasawwuf says that most of the early Imams of Tasawwuf did not affirm the ru'ya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life for the Prophet And he mentions who it is. One of my, I mentioned that to one of my, to Sheikh Akram Abdullah, who was a very balanced scholar. He says, لَعَلَّ النُّسْخَ مُصَحَّفَ I said, see, the, I have this number of copies. I already looked at that possibility. He said, did he mention Isnad for their aqwali? I said, no. Said, we rather accept it because he's making a claim. Right? So, just be aware that not everything is as clear cut as the conclusions that are mentioned here. Right? So that's number, number three is, given number one and number two, قد, you know, that, قد ولع الناس بالدخول في رياضي فوائده That people go to benefit from it, right? That's number three. Number four, he was asked. But of course, another implication that given it is subtle, a lot of people would not catch all the nuances. That's one of the other reasons, right? So, and he was asked, and this is one of the benefits of asking, right? Of asking for the good. That's how many times do you see at the openings of books that a scholar was asked either by a teacher to write something or by, a stu- by students that could you write this. And they listened. And, it, it pro- and there's a barakah in a sincere request. Right? The book of, uh, just on the Islamic Studies curriculum at Seekers, the book of assistance was by Imam al-Haddad, Risa'at al-Mu'awana, was the response to someone's question to tell me about the path to Allah. He wrote him a book. I, the Johrat al-Tawheed itself. You know, this text. Numerous other texts, similarly. And he makes dua for them as well. Right? And then, he, that's one. So some of the distinguishing qualities of the Johara, he also breaks down here um, some of his reasons for writing the text. Right? Some of his reasons for t- writing the text. So he says, فَلَمَّنْ شَرَحَ صَدْرِي لِذَلِكْ right? Once my heart became expansive for it. He's pointing to the fact that he did istikhara of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah? And 
with whatever else the istikhara would entail customarily wallahu a'lam bima hunalik right again humility i'm not saying that i have some great spiritual standing or insight he's saying saraftu zimam al-azmi nahwa riyadhihi right wa awrad wa awradtu al-fikra fi abqariy hiyadhihi right in its unique yani hiyad proof yani hawd wa qad tayassara li idhaka ba'd ba'd shurrah al-nadhim al-humam right um right so he had access to some of the great commentaries right um and um see the run are you using the the other uh, other text uh yes i'm using the turkish edition um we can just put a little asterisk here we can check because it could possibly be بعض شروح الناظم الهمام because the nazim himself has commentaries so is it شروح in the either manuscript or another edition right right because it Allah alam بعض شروح الناظم because right, normally you say بعض شروح النظم right, normally right and if it's talking about the author's commentary it'd be بعض شروح الناظم right because imam al-laqani had two commentaries that he completed there's a short third one that he'd wanted to do and i don't know if he actually did it or not uh, his son seems to indicate he only did two there's people claiming there's a third I'm not entirely sure. And we talked about the two known commentaries. Right? So it, it may well be بعض شروح الناظم right? عمدة المريد and هداية المريد and it's clear. What is <coughs> Yeah. Okay. Bismillah. ما حواشي النظم ما حواشي النظم وشرحه للشيخ عبد السلام right who's the son of the author وما ما كتبه عليه السادة الأعلام right عليه whether على النظم أو على شرح ابن النظم so the شرح of the the of الشيخ عبد السلام because it was brief but like a a good you know moderately sized commentary it it became arguably the most taught of the commentaries on the johara <coughs> certainly all the way till imam sawi's commentary came out you know, quite a while later and then imam bajuri <laughs> And we mentioned that of the uh, on Sharh ibn al Nadim, Hashit al Amir, and ha- particularly, but also Hashit al Shanawani, are distinguished of the many Hawashi on them, and also Sheikh Muhyiddin Abdul Hamid. وغير ذلك مما فتح به السلام سبحانه وتعالى فالتقطت منها دررا نفيسا. وَمَحَاسِنَ شَرِيفَ right? Sometimes you say, you know, there's a common complaint that they're not referencing, that this is actually taken from He's already saying that, look, there's commentaries on it. You want to know where did Imam Bajuri take it from this? He's already told you, bil ijmal that I've relied upon the author's commentaries, his son's commentary, the Hawashi on it, and the other works on it. And he's making, ilti- he's saying, I have taken from it. And some of it's on you. If you really want to know, go and pay the price, look for it. Right? Um, right. 
ومحاسن شريفة ونظمتها في سلك التحبير والتصنيف يعني التحبير right is you know of your verification والتصنيف يعني an authoring in terms of proper you know, proper arrangement وجعلتها حاشية على هذا المتن الشريف وقد سميتها تحفة المريد على جوهرة التوحيد right and then he prays for right uh, so he tells us here clearly what he relied upon right? and that's why we mention in the in the opening class you know what you can find benefit to unpack the text because he's a lot of it's taken from there of course he adds a lot of things he adds a lot of things as well and he's being quite humble so and then he makes his supplication after that right um so he says rahimahullah ta'ala right um ja'alaha allah ta'ala khalisan khalisatan li wajhihi al karim may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it purely sincere for his sake alone for right li wajhihi al karim for his noble countenance right and right and the mutakhirin generally state like mentioned in um in baydawi etc wajhuhu dhatuhu right and others would just say wajhuhu wajhuhu right and we don't say it and that's um um you know that is um but ala li wajhi al karim lahu subhanahu wa ta'ala li dhatihi wa nafa'a biha kull man talaqaha bi qalbin salim right and of course these are the the keys to success to be khalis to to have um uh, ikhlas right and the key to benefit is al qalb al salim right uh, why because the idea of fawaha fa'addaha kama sami' right the nadara allahu ra'an sami'a maqalati fawaha fa'addaha kama sami' that there the the wa'y al ilm is you know they say there's a tamthil in it right that may allah illuminate the counsel of one who hears my words fawaha right they encompass it but kanahu أصبح وعاء لهذا العلم وشرط الوعاء النافع أن يكون نظيف الباطن right? the condition for the container that you can benefit from is that it be pure that be clean inside but otherwise لا ينفع which is why he connects it to وكل من تلقاها بقلب سليم right? كل من تلقاها بقلب سليم um wal marju mim man ittala'a alayha an yanzura ilayha nadara i'tidhar right that's from his you know humility right uh wa wa yajurra ala ma fiha min al hafawat adyal al astar right and that's the adab right that if there's some Er, one, and one of the adab of the, you know, something that is مَخِلَافُهُ the, the way Ibn Abdin put it in his opening of his hashia about what Imam Al-Tahtawi and Imam Al-Halabi the two great commentators on the dur before him said that if they mention مَخِلَافُهُ sawab the contrary of which is correct says, I mention what is correct وَلَا أُصَرِّحْ بِالْإِعْتِرَاضِ and I don't explicitly mention my objection that's superior. Ilm, as you can just say, this is not correct, but the, the, but there is an adab, particularly if you recognize where you are speaking from, right? And with adab, we you know we state that this definition is more comprehensive. This uh, there's there are things in the text that makhilafu tahqiq, right? Or it's غير مسلم, but this is a beautiful that that they cast over those things. 
أذيال الأستار and what the way is to make a توجيه of the kalam say well this is way it could be interpreted and but this is what you know what is more correct um there's a faida because he says جعل الله تعالى خالصة لوجه الكريم in the mufradat of Raghib al-Isfahani he gives a very useful discussion that he says al-khalisu ka-safi right the khalis is like the safi right the pure illa anna al-khalisa huwa ma zala anhu shawbuhu the the khalis would be the purified is the one whose whose dross imperfections have been removed بعدك أن كان فيه after having had dross and imperfections in it وصافي قد يقال لما لا شوب فيه but the, the pure does not did not necessarily have to have imperfections in it and then he explains this under the yeah, خلاصة and you can find it in the مفردات so he said ف so Raghib al Isfahani is a beautiful definition of ikhlas. He says, حقيقة الإخلاص التبري عما عن كل ما دون الله تعالى. التبري is to rid oneself of all besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the heart of ikhlas. And as Mawlana al Alusi mentions in in his tafsir, والراغب هو من هو في اللغة. Raghib is who he is um, in the Arabic language. So that's one aspect, right? And one of the resources we're sharing here as well, it's not directly connected, but it's a useful fa'ida. Um, Ibn Ajiba in his Bahr al Madid has a very nice discussion on what is Al Amalu Salih, the righteous deed. Al Amalu Salih Yarfa'u. He talks about it. This pointing towards it, you can read it there, right? Um, right. That and but the re- th- what it relates to is this idea of man bi-qalbin salim. So he says in it, right, that yani, the the righteous action is mutawqif al tawheed right? al amal salih is mutawaqqif qabuluhu ala at-tawheed right um right al-amal salih yarfa'u but that the the person who acts with true tawheed right their action is more likely to be accepted and one of the keys to that of course is dhikr right is dhikr right that it is being in a state of dhikr that facilitates the elevation of acts and he has a nice discussion on that, right, um, and and you can see see that discussion. We don't want to, um, um, and the the merit, of course, of covering. So he says, "Fasetru min shi'amil kiram." So concealing faults is from the traits of the noble. Wa'idaatul awrat min da'bil liam, right, and to disclose. The faults of others is from the ways of the li'am, right? the lowly, right? And here, of course, there are many, many hadiths related to this, right? And amongst them, the hadith in Imam it, it related by Imam Tirmidhi, right? Um, right? That in an Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sa'idat Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, المنبر فنادى بصوت رفيع so he called out with a high voice فقال عليه الصلاة والسلام يا معشر من أسلم بجلسانه a party of those who have entered Islam with their tongue ولم يفضي ولم يفضي الإيمان إلى قلبي but faith has not really penetrated their heart لا تؤذوا المسلمين don't hurt the Muslims وَلَا تُعَيِّرُوهُمْ And do not bring out their faults. وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا عَوْرَاتِهِمْ And don't seek out their hidden faults, right? Or their blameworthy qualities. And this is a 
stark warning فإنه من, من تتبع عورة أخيه المسلم تتبع الله عورته for whoever you know, seeks out and pursues the hidden faults of their fellow Muslim Allah seeks out their faults ومن تتبع الله عورته يفضحه ولو في جوفي رحله and who, 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 whomever Allah seeks out their faults he will shame even if it be in the you know in the um, in, in, in their privacy right right um, so that is something that one has to be very careful about وَنَظَرَ بْنُ عُمَرَ رضي الله تعالى يَوْمًا إِلَى الْكَعْبَةِ فَقَالْ مَا أَعْظَمَكِ وَأَعْظَمَ حُرْمَتَكِ right, so, وَالْمُؤْمِنُ أَعْظَمُ حُرْمَةً عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْكِ and that's part of uh, so Nafi' who's one of the narrators I believe of this the hadith we mentioned on the Prophet then he mentions that uh, you know, Sayyidina uh, Abdullah ibn Umar looked at the Kaaba right and he said this right um, and some of it of course is also related um, elsewhere right so so then he says Wallah ta'ala as'al وَبِي نَبِيِّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَتَوَسَّلْ أَنْ تَحُلَّ مَحَلَّ الْقَبُولِ So it, it is Allah alone I ask, right? This is again this statement of sincerity, exclusivity in the asking. وَبِي نَبِيِّهِ أَتَوَسَّلْ Right? And by his Prophet I seek intercession. That, you know, and he's asking for قَبُول إِنَّهُ خَيْرُ مَأْمُولِ وَأَكْرَمُ مَسْؤُولِ And in some of the recommended readings, of course, we, some of the recommended readings here, we've shared um, you know, a little bit of the background related to uh, the, the, you know, the, 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 rec- the recommendedness of tawassul, right? Um, and, you know, the various hadiths, right? And besides, of course, the famous hadith of the blind man, there's many other texts, Right in Sahih al Bukhari, right, you find, um, you know, with with the chain of transmission, right, um, that you know it's mentioned by Abdurrahman ibn Abdullah ibn Dinar an Abihi qal sami'tu sami'tu ibn Umar yatamathalu bi shi'ri Abi Talib, right, wa abyadu yustasqa al ghamam bi wajhihi thimal al yatama. Ismatul lil aramili. Right? Right? That Abu Talib, you can say, well, Abu Talib said it before, before Islam, he wasn't Muslim, etc., etc. But, you know, and Imam Bukhari didn't only mention it taliqan, he mentioned it with the chain of transmission, right? That Abdullah ibn Umar, um, you know, made them feel of it. And others, there's others, narrations in Bukhari. Multiple commentators on Bukhari, amongst them Al you know, Kirmani and Qastalani, uh, Ibn uh, uh, Imam Al Aini, right? Um, and he met Imam Badri Al Aini in Umdat Al Qari, Sharh Sahih Al Bukhari says, Ma'ana Kauli Abi Talib Hada, Fil Hakika, Tawasulun Ida Allahi Ta'ala bin Abihi. Right? Right? Lenno, why? لأنه حضر استسقاء عبد المطلب والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم معه because he attended when عبد المطلب sought rain from the you know from Allah سبحانه وتعالى and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was with him فيكون استسقاء الناس الغمام في ذلك الوقت ببركة وجهه الكريم so he sought rain from the clouds by the by the blessedness of that noble face صلى الله عليه وسلم Right, um, and you can, and then, right, Sayyidina Abdullah yani Ibn Umar mentioned it, right, for for this you know for the same purpose and outcomes. And there's many many other things, and we've shared um, the from the Athkar of Imam Nawawi, the 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 you know under Bab Salat al Haja, 
he mentions the, the uh, there's two du'as of hajjah the second of which is the du'a of tawassul right and the, the commentary there of Ibn Allan al-Bakri on tawassul and some of his backgrounds and there are countless works on tawassul if you were to look at two books they've been published together which are uh, one of the best scholarly summaries on the issue is by Imam Muhammad Zahid al-Kawthari which is محق التقول في مسألة التوسل and the second is um, the the work of Imam Muhammad Abid al-Sindi the work of Imam Muhammad Abid al-Sindi um, related to but uh, Imam Al-Kawthari makes excellent ta'seel of the issue with Imam Al-Kawthari you have to appreciate that he was in a time when there's a lot of mess going on and he had seen what you know the the secular Ottomans uh, secular you know, young Turks and others had done to the Ottoman Empire and caused its downfall and then he saw the devastation being done by the modernists and and the you know and the islahis you know the salafis wahhabis in damascus and he wasn't in damascus that long and in egypt as well and the islah al-azhar and all these things happening so he's a bit angry and a bit maybe a bit of an understatement and sometimes you have to say okay there's a context to that anger, but don't let that blind you from, from the brilliance of Imam al right? Um, it's a brilliant work. And sometimes he's a little bit hard, and that's a bit of an understatement, on those who disagree with him. But he has reasons to be upset. So you, know, like you have to take that in. Imam Muhammad Abid al-Sindi, who's an amazing hadith master, an amazing faqih, he has a 16 volume commentary on Dur al Mukhtar. In the manuscript of copies, 8,000 uh, uh, lawhas. Um, he also has a commentary on the Musnad of Imam Abi Hanifa, published, I think, in six to eight volumes. Um, and many important rasail, etc. His treatise on um, Tawassul is really excellent. And there's so many narrations. I mean, okay, these guys just hold on to one hadith of the blind man. That's not the case. Right? And, and he has ex excellent, he explains out Tawassul and what it is and the different usages and implications and so on in a very capable way. But also, then many narrations for of, the, of the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the early Muslims, etc. related to that. And he also quotes from some of the treatises before amongst them a very influential treatise by Imam Subki on the topic where he refuted what Ibn Taymiyyah and some others started saying you know, seven centuries after um, the topic so that this is not an issue you, you should you know these are not the issues to, to argue with anyone about but this idea that somehow some later scholars just came up with this idea of no now, tawassul is affirmed. It's not a central point in our religion. But at the same time, you know, it, it is not somehow the people who have real tawheed don't do it. No, we just, it, it's, it's affirmed. It has its place. And, you know, and so we should just have clarity regarding that. Those are two of the good treatises. They're, they're both capably edited by Sheikh Wahbi Suleiman Gawaji. And the PDF of that will be available with this lesson. Uh, for the for part two, we'll also share, and I'm in no way implying that we uh, necessarily read these, but to have them available, and I think m most of these have already been uploaded. There are many treatises on the Basmala, and they should be in the toolkit of the Talib Ilm. Amongst them, one of the best summary works, and you see is by Sheikh al-Islam Zakir al-Ansari who's one of those people if he wrote on something it's going to be one of the best things written he's just one of these brilliant minds 
So his Sharh al Basmala wal Hamdala is very good. Um, there's also a treatise by Imam Abu Sa'id al Khadimi. And he does a very useful thing. He shows how the meanings of the Basmala, how each of the sciences of Islam brings out some of the meanings of the Basmala. Which is also very just a useful exercise that, okay, what what is the what are the grammatical investigation, the Nahu investigation, the Sarf investigation, Ma'ani, Bayan, you know, Mantiq, you know, Fiqh, other things. And it's a good, good treatise. There's also a large treatise by uh, Al Sabban, Al Basmal Al Kabir, which is very good. And these have been published together by Dar Al Salih. Uh, and, and these are things you're not necessarily reading them all together, but. Um, you you tap, they're worth tapping into, and just keeping in your toolkit. So we will continue from there, bismillah taala. Um, and we've pointed out, of course, Sheikh Muhammad Salih Al Gursi has uh, an edition of Tuhft uh, Al Murid. Um, it doesn't hurt if you're a talib ilm, just scan through his notes. They're also very interesting. Uh, Sheikh Salih Al Gursi, you just have to take a deep breath. Often he he objects quite quickly to certain things. Though there is toji, once in a while we will be making toji of some of the things that Sheikh Salih Al Gursi objects to without necessarily mentioning him. But um, and often he makes some good points uh, as well. Rahmatullahi uh, Taala. So that's what we wanted to look at today. وَصَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَى سَيْدِنَا وَنَبِيْنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى أَلِي وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَّمْ Before we close, any questions? Go ahead. Go ahead. As-salamu alaykum. At-tawassul... Uh, some make it seem like a fiqh mas'ala and some make it seem like an aqidah mas'ala. Uh, which no, so tawassul, you need practice, like depend, is tawassul, some people make tawassul seem uh, like a fiqh mas'ala, other people make it seem like a aqidah mas'ala. Firstly, it goes back to defining tawassul, right? So if you say that tawassul is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Allah's love or estimation for somebody, then if you define tawassul that way, it's a purely fiqh masala. Can you ask Allah because of someone's rank, because of Allah's love and honoring of someone or not? That's why definitions are powerful, right? Right? That you want someone. So Sheikh, one of our teachers here in Toronto, when I was at university, at uh, Jamia Masjid, they had a they had a debate on tawassul or something in Arabic. So yeah, and some of your folk were there, like ethnically and background in a, in another sense, right? So uh, Sheikh Talal, it was Sheikh Talal, he said, okay, um, since you are more much more learned than us, etc. Why don't you tell us what what do you you know how you define tawassul? And he asked them. Oh, interesting. And could you explain? Because they define it and said, okay, that's good. Because if you define that tawassul is making du'a to other than Allah, then it becomes a point of aqidah. That goes back to the definition. We don't believe it's du'a to other than Allah, right? So a lot of times, it's a matter of definition, right? Um, and and in that sense, the worst case scenario, if you, that you're making dua to Allah, and this is even technically, even according to Imam Muhammad Abid al Sindi, as argued by Imam al Subki, and as argued by many other authorities, even istighatha, to directly calling upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, for example, or anybody else, is shorthand. That when you say, actually, technically, Right? It's there in the dua of the blind man. 
يا محمد إني أتوجه بك إلى ربي. It got what's يا محمد. That's istighatha. Is there in the du'a tasul to begin with? But that it is shorthand. That oh Allah, I ask you by the barakah, and it's either asking Allah by the love and rank of the person, or you're asking Allah that oh Allah, I am asking you to convey to so and so for them to pray for me. Then the worst case scenario is you are asking Allah that if you if someone were to say Ya Rasulullah al-Madad, you're asking Allah that oh Allah convey to Rasulullah for him to pray for me. Worst case scenario is. You asked Allah to convey it. Allah does not convey those kinds of du'as. Worst case scenario is, is a failed attempt. That I can get to the door with my eyes closed. No, you can't. You'll bump into the wall. Doesn't make you kafir. Just makes, it was, it was foolhardy. Others feel that no, if you ask Allah to convey it to Rasulullah, he answers du'as. And, and there's other possibilities. That it's just majas. Just an expression of love. And the cases of that are very clear. If you look in Muhammad Abd al-Sindi, there's numerous narrations that someone got their leg the, uh, yani got, um, got stiff. And they said, mention the most beloved of people to you. So he said, wa Muhammadah. And he was healed. And these are, there's many, many narrations like that. At, at the battle, the, their cry was, wa Muhammadah. Or ya Muhammadah. There are different narrations. Now, if you believe that they're worshipping the Prophet, no. How does the Prophet hear it? To the person, wh- what would you think of the believer? That they're worship suddenly the Salaf were worshipping other than Allah? No. They believe that it's shorthand for dua. Oh Allah, convey to the Messenger وسلم, for him to make dua for us. It's just like if you're, you know, someone's going to go visit um, Sheikh Yahya al Mullah, or they're going to talk to him, say, ask him to make dua for me. Now, do I have to say, ask him to make dua to Allah on my behalf? No, that's understood. Right? Right? So it's, we use shorthand in all kinds of things. So that's where it comes up. But it's a useful thing to read about. So the definition of tawassul is to ask Allah. There's, and that's what we're at in Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Abd al-Sindi's treatise is useful. He makes the the various ways that, and there's various ways to make tawassul that are established both textually and all of which are implicit in the hadith of Tirmidhi, right? Because the hadith of Tirmidhi mentions very clearly both, like, it's almost like the long form of tawassul. Okay. Can you shorten it? Yeah. Just like in dua you can say, Ya Rab, what are you asking for? What you're asking for is implicit. And that's just the nature of Arabic language. Right? Much of what the Arabs say is unstated, but it's understood. Now, when you affirm what someone is saying, you affirm sound meanings. Right? If someone says, bring me tea, you wouldn't bring tea leaves. It's so many things are unstated. Right? So, um, someone brings you the letter T, that's al fahm al That's also T. Bring me some tea. I got you three letter T's. Astaghfirullah. Like, that's just silly. Similarly, why would you think of a believer that they are doing all these things? Now, there's exaggerations. You deal with the, the exaggerations. Like if people are overdoing it, whatever, then that's something else. Right? Um, the, but at the same time, what you see, do... Th- it's something that's affirmed. In our times, it needs to be defended just because there are people who are attacking it unnecessarily and making Im- imputing it. And if you say, okay, let's take one lesson from cancel culture, right? They say, okay, let's accept a hypothesis. Every, if you believe that tawassul is deviance, then, then just agree to label all the scholars who engaged in it or approved of it as being deviant. Then you have no asanid left to any of the Islamic sciences. You should stop using the commentaries in Bukhari because every single commentator in Bukhari mentions at least, because there's multiple hadiths that indicate tawassul in Bukhari. And we just mentioned the one of the instances, the reference of Ibn Umar with respect to you know, the, 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 
the verses said by Ibn Omar is also mentioned from Sayyidina Abu Bakr and Sayyidina Aisha and others and to who you, to, to what extent are you going to cancel right and and on you have to cancel not just Ibn Hajar and Al Aini Imam Nawawi everybody who's left right so then if you're not going to cancel them then you know, you're not going to call them deviant then please don't call us deviant either don't want to do it ahlan wa we didn't ask you to do it right and it's not like we're insisting thou shalt make tawassul right and they just accept fi khilaf right you want to go back all the way so okay who are yeah the four methods which of the hanabila say it's makruh right it's in their mutun even like you find these things right and you go backwards right the, the works of hadith right um fa it's unnecessarily problematized and it's a, it's a means right like taking any other means right you're drinking a cup of water could be shirk when when would you're drinking a cup of water be shirk Yeah, you, if you believe, if you ascribe absolute efficacy to the water, if you believe the water quenches your thirst, this is what's called shirkul asbab. According, like in the muqaddimat of Imam al-Sanusi, right? But it's a bid'ah. It's not, you're not worshipping the water or anything. It's just, that is, yani, believing that the asbab al-adiyya have ta'thir bi nafsiha. Right? But it's a bid'ah fil i'tiqad. Right? And a lot of people have those kinds of things. The medicine cures, this and that. So th- does that mean you stop taking medicine, drinking water, eating food? No, it just means make, you correct your understanding. Right? Correct your understanding. And and jahl is an afa. The unlearned have misunderstandings about do they really th- act it? But at the same time, we don't have su'adhan bil muslimin. Do, re- do we really believe that a Muslim would ask that, did uh, did the food quench your, uh, satiate your hunger? They, they'll say yes. So, oh, that's bid'ah. No, no, no. So, how did it quench, how did it satiate your hunger? What would they say? say because, and they, if you point to the right, they say, of course Allah did it. Now their, so their bid'ah is bid'ah to ghaflatin, not bid'ah to i'tiqat. That's husnadhan bil muslimin. That, the common Muslim may be ghafil of Allah's active creating of the sabab and musabab, but that's that's heedlessness rather than denial. That's husnadan bil muslimin. And you can test it with people. Even someone, people who are doing weird things at the grave, whatever, say no, those practices, the fuqah said, do, you should not do that. Right? But someone goes, kisses the grave. You go kiss a cat, did you worship the cat? You go kiss a wall, right? Because that's the first time Zubair saw Zubaydah. So he goes to that wall and kisses it. Did he worship the wall right now? He just did something, worst case, he did something weird. This we- Weirdness is not worship, right? right? Someone went, kissed a grave, maybe it's love. Maybe bad adab. The Sahaba did things that were love. That was in itself bad adab. But we wouldn't say it was bad adab with respect to them. The person in the process had poked their stomach that this would be better elsewhere because he had a bit of a pouch, a stomach. The Sahabi said, I want to, I want to, you know, you know kisas, I want to you know, reciprocate. The process said, go ahead, said, no, lift your shirt. Imagine if I did that, if you did that to me, would it be adab? I wouldn't lift my shirt, of course. I'd be embarrassed. Prophet lifted his shirt and no, lifted more. The Prophet lifted more. The Sahabi went and kissed the stomach of the Prophet. And the Prophet said, so Why did he do that? This guy knew that no skin that has touched your skin will ever touch the fire. Is that in itself good adab? Can you conceive of doing that to Shaykh Lahir, for example? No. But it's just, it's just love. It's love. And Sahaba did all kinds of things out of love. Right? 
So we shouldn't have su'a dhan bil muslimin, that they're out there worshipping this and that. There are practices that need rectification, and the ulama throughout the ages have said, what are the adab of ziyarat al-qubur? What are the makruhat? What are the muharramat? Right? There is a balance. What do you do in dua? What is the asl in dua? And there are other things that are exceptional. That are exceptional. Right? If you're Hanafi, Ibn Abdin relates from Al-Imadi and other Hanafis before, that they had trouble, like grave trouble in life. So they said, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa alihi qad daqat hilati adrikni ya Rasulullah. And, and, the, and their kurba, their distress was lifted. And Ibn Abdin said, I was afflicted by grave tribulation. And I d- did it, fazalat. And it was r- lifted. And so you want to cancel Ibn Abdin and Al-Imadi and other great Hanafis, then you can do so too. If you don't, if you're not going to say Ibn Abdin's deviant, then please, ta'addab, waskut. And if you don't have to understand everything, say, I don't understand it, I don't do it, ahlan wa sahlan. Right? There's people who don't understand why people apply kuhul. You don't have to object. It's established in the sunnah. Do you normally use kuhul? Have you done it in the last 10 years? No. But uh, would you do it? Not anytime soon, maybe. Right? But do you have to object? No. Just say, I find if I know myself, if I try to apply kuhul, I'd probably go blind because I'd poke my eye. Just, uh, I don't know how, how to do it. Going to the hammam. A lot of the salaf went to the hammam. I have a ban on entering a hammam from my wife. I'd rather listen to my wife than, <laughs> than visit the hammam. So inshallah, th- those things are, you know, they're, they're firm, but they should not be exaggerated. It's not the asl fi dua not anything like that, but having su'a dhan bil muslimin. So if you say that, then khalas, everybody was deviant. Right? Everybody. Then ha- if everybody was deviant, then how was our deen preserved? It's ridiculous, right? It's ridiculous. Uh, but at the same time, as a talib ilm, one should not argue with anybody. Right? One can get through life. It's very clear from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that there are grave harms in disputation. We don't dispute. We clarify the truth. We, we're not any. We're not there to control people. People don't want to do it. Don't do it. We just clarify and move on. Okay? People have other questions. So they're Point them to books. That's what the mashayikh say. Someone wants to argue, point them to a book. There's a really good book on this, also this book, etc. And that's it. Mubarakallah to you. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.